written accounts of extraterrestrial encounters have been known to exist in old tales from around the world, all across human history. Knowing this, could it be possible that one of the oldest known biblical scriptures holds evidence of such an encounter, that is verifiable in the modern day? Many have made the connections between extraterrestrials and the lost biblical text known as the Book of Enoch. What many people are not aware of is that the modern day Christian Bible is actually an incomplete collection of religious texts that had been gathered from a variety of Judaism holy scriptures that had been circulating throughout the world during the 4th century. During this time, religious scholars handpicked which religious texts were believed to have been canonical scriptures with Judaism religion, and quickly rejected any texts or scriptures that seemed to put into question the viability of the religion, or featured stories that made mention of other godlike beings. Only these chosen handpicked texts would make up the Christian Bible, despite references within these texts to reject non canonical tales that heavily influence and detail information found throughout the Christian Bible. One such text, now known as the Lost Book of the Bible, is that of the ancient religious scripture known as the Book of Enoch. Originally rejected for speaking of other powerful beings, known as the Watchers, the Book of Enoch and the Story of Enoch is referenced several times throughout a number of different books in the Bible such as Genesis, Hebrews, Jude and many others. So what were the Watchers? And why did this lead to the rejection of the story from the canonical texts? According to the Book of Enoch, the Watchers were fallen angels that began teaching humans advanced technologies and magic. It is through these Watchers that Enoch experiences visions that featured technologies comparable to the modern day understanding of spacecrafts. In fact, the Book of Enoch opens its text with a direct explanation to the future, claiming that people in the time of Enoch will not be able to understand his visions of technology, and that it will only be understood by humans in the distant future, most likely referencing to humans in the modern day with comparable technologies. The text says the following, there was a righteous man whose eyes were opened by the Lord, and he saw a holy vision in the heavens, which the angel showed to me, and I heard everything from them, and I understood what I saw, but not for this generation, but for a distant generation that will come. Shortly after this statement, Enoch talks about his journey ascending into the sky, and seeing the heavens first hand. His account is written as follows. Behold, clouds called me in the vision, and mist called me, and the path of the stars and flashes of lightning hastened me and drove me, and in the vision winds caused me to fly, and hastened me, and lifted me up into the sky. And as I proceeded until I came near a wall which was made of hailstones, and a tongue of fire surrounded it, and it began to make me afraid. Could this passage found in the Book of Enoch be evidence of advanced alien cross witnessed by early man? Interestingly, Enoch describes that he ascended into a cloud that was hovering above him. This occurred after he saw flashes of lightning, an obvious reference to electricity, and then suddenly was lifted up into the sky by winds that began to surround him, which directly matches modern day alien abduction stories of being lifted into the sky in a beam of light. When he entered the cloud, Enoch described tongues of fire which seems eerily similar to the red and orange lights commonly seen on modern day sightings of extraterrestrial aircrafts. Shortly after his abduction, Enoch talks about how the Watchers wished to teach him about the stars, and that the cloud they resided in began venturing out deep into space, as Enoch recorded what he saw, trying to make sense of what he was witnessing. Enoch also gave accurate descriptions of what the stars look like when seen up close in space by describing his journey in the following statement. And beyond this chasm, I saw a place and it had neither the sky above it, nor the foundation of the earth below it. There was no water on it and no birds, but it was a desert place, and a terrible thing I saw there. Seven stars like great burning mountains, 
if you were a primitive human being with no way to compare the deep endless darkness of space, would this fit an accurate description of what you witnessed? Interestingly, Enoch describes the stars as being far larger in person, something not traditionally known at the time, with ancient man believing that stars were nothing more than tiny lights that lit up the night sky. However, Enoch directly compares the stars to great burning mountains. If this experience fails to provide substantial proof as to Enoch traveling through the stars, with almost godlike watches, Enoch continues to explain what sounds almost like a black hole swallowing a dying star. In the scripture, the book of Enoch describes, And from there I went to another place, more terrible than this, and I saw a terrible thing. There was a great fire there which burnt and blazed, and the place had a cleft reaching into the abyss, full of great pillars of fire, which were made to fall. Neither its extent nor its size could I see, nor could I see its source. Although most people can hardly imagine what a black hole looked like in person, a star falling into an abyss that had no bottom and of size that could not be seen with no source, is one of the most accurate descriptions someone could give for a singularity. The description of a cleft reaching into the abyss is commonly how stars are swallowed, in large arching orbits with long pillars of fire reaching in. When Enoch then began to show that he was terrified of the abyss, the watchers explained that he shouldn't be scared, and then went on to elaborate that the black hole was nothing more than a prison for angels. Although this might sound more religious than scientific, it was believed in the scripture that angels were made from light, making the exact translation of the passage to mean that the abyss was a prison, of which light could never escape. The exact passage in the book states as follows. He answered me and said to me, Enoch, why do you have such fear and terror because of this terrible place, and before this pain? And he said to me, this place is the prison of angels, and there they will be held forever. Shortly after the watchers explain the black hole to Enoch, and how it functions, they take him to see how the sun works, and how the sky of the earth is lit up. In it, Enoch describes the following passage. And from there I went to another place, towards the west to the ends of the world, and I saw a fire that burnt and ran, without resting or ceasing from running, by day or by night, but continued in exactly the same way, and I said, what is this which has no rest? Then Regal, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered me and said to me, this burning fire whose course you saw towards the west is the fire of all the lights of the sky. Interestingly, Enoch believed that the sun would rest, referencing the day and night cycle, but was surprised to see that the burning never stopped and never moved. When he inquired as to his cause, one of the watchers described that the burning light was the light people see rising in the east and settling in the west that lights up the entirety of the sky. Does this prove evidence that Enoch was aware that rather than the sun orbiting the earth, he witnessed that the earth orbited the sun when he writes that the lights continued in exactly the same way. Not only does this lead credence to the sightings made by Enoch, when studying alongside the watches that brought him through the sky in a cloud, but it also shows that Enoch possessed advanced information that humanity would not be able to learn until the time of Galileo. However, even more incredible than these accounts are the details that the Book of Enoch provides when detailing and limitation of the universe that humanity has only recently uncovered. According to Enoch, his journey with the Watchers only lasted around two weeks. However, when Enoch returned to the Earth, he remarked that over 300 years had passed, providing direct evidence of an experience of time dilation, a recently discovered property on the relativity of space and time. In fact, multiple passages of the Bible also make reference to this strange discovery, such as chapter 5 verse 22 of the book of Genesis, that states the following. Enoch walked with God after he fathered Methuselah 300 years, 
and had other sons and daughters. How would it have been possible for a human being to have lived for 300 years during ancient times? Additionally, the end to Enoch's story tells that he continued his travel with the Watchers, and is still alive in the modern day. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible states the following, By faith Enoch was taken up so he should not see death, and he was not found, because God had taken him. Could this mean that Enoch is still travelling through the stars, and has survived up until the modern day due to time dilation? With the overwhelming details, evidence, witness encounter and impossible parallels with modern day understandings, this could more than possibly be the case. So what do you make of the Book of Enoch? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.